This is Lorne Green. In World War II, 61 U.S. Army divisions were locked in mortal combat with the enemy in the European theater of operations. This film is about one of those divisions, the 10th Armory. The 10th Armored Division was activated at Fort Benning, Georgia, on the 15th of July, 1942. From the very beginning, it was known as a hot outfit. Its nickname, Tiger Division. The commanding general of the 10th, Major General Paul W. Newgarden, was a superb leader. Carry out orders, march, maneuver, and shoot were his bywords. No man had more pride in his troops, and no general was more revered by his men. I'm John Drew Devereaux. I was a company commander in the 10th Armored Division during World War II. We had a marvelous kind of uh, spirit in our division, and I think it was due in great part to the training we got from General Newgarden, who was our division commander in the States. Uh, he was killed in an airplane crash before we went overseas. Now, he had a couple of uh, very pet things that he liked. One, that we had to wear the top button of our coveralls button. Uh, this was pretty uncomfortable, but after a while we got so that we looked at other outfits who wore them unbuttoned and we thought they looked like slobs. He had a kind of thing that he liked to do about uh, the salute. When you gave a salute in the 10th Armored Division, a tiger salute, you lifted your chin up in the air like that. That seemed pretty silly too until uh, after a while we got used to it and uh, then we thought we were the only outfit in the whole army that knew how to salute properly. In July 1944, a new leader assumed command of the division following General Newgarden's death. I am Lieutenant General William H. H. Morris, Jr., U.S. Army, retired. I was commanding general of the 10th Armored Division in Europe during World War II. The division sailed from New York on September 14, 1944. The long period of training was over. The men were prepared for anything, but their wildest imagination could not conjure up what destiny held in store for them. Two days later, on the 16th of September, Hitler, meeting with his most trusted generals, made a momentous decision, a decision which would alter the course of the war. Operation Christ Rose, the Ardennes Offensive, a campaign in which the Tigers of the 10th would cover themselves with glory and make military history. The division arrived in battle-torn Cherbourg on the 22nd of September and was immediately assigned to General Walton Walker's 20th Corps, which was under control of General George S. Patton's 3rd Army. General Patton came to visit our division and talk to the officers and non-commissioned officers as he did with all the divisions that were assigned to his army. General Patton covered very effectively the combat lessons learned during the war at the squad, section, and platoon level. I'm Colonel Thomas Chamberlain. During World War II, I commanded the 11th Tank Battalion of the 10th Armored Division. I can remember vividly the first days of combat, the first orders we received. Colonel. Roberts called us into a small churchyard in the town of Chalons-sur-Marne. His first words were that the reason he called us into this particular churchyard in this particular town were that the, this was the place that he had received his first orders to go into combat during World War I, and he wanted to use this particular spot to start us off. We moved up all afternoon past Verdun, and in the vicinity of Metz. And then that evening, in a beautiful moonlight night, it happened to be Halloween night, we infiltrated our half tracks one by one, three minutes apart, down a very spooky road through a village and up into a wooded area, dismounted and then trucked on up and relieved the 90th Division. I'm William R. Desiree. 
I was a battalion commander, a major in the 10th Armored Division in World War II. The 10th Armored Division was a very well-trained division. Its first combat was against Metz. Metz was, uh, you might call it a defensive sector as far as uh, the 10th was concerned. We were supposed to aggressively patrol, and we did. We saw that every instrument and every weapon was fired at least once in uh, more or less anger against the enemy. I'm William Lynn Roberts, Brigadier General, U.S. Army Retired. I was combat command commander of CCB 10th Armored Division in World War II. I'm Colonel Curtis L. Hankins. I was a battalion commander of the 61st Armored Infantry Battalion in the 10th Armored Division. My first encounter with enemy fire was during the defensive operation west of Metz. It was here that we learned to sense artillery fire, that is, determine the difference between outgoing, which was friendly fire, and incoming, which was German fire. If you could determine with some degree of accuracy where the enemy rounds were going to land, this would save a lot of wear and tear on your knees and elbows, and you'd try to take cover every time the rounds would come over. I am Colonel James O'Hara. I commanded the 54th Armored Infantry Battalion of the 10th Armored Division. I consider that this initial baptism of fire in a defensive position was very good for the battalion. It gave us time to gather our thoughts, practice some of the things we'd been learning in the States, get our communications working, having the reconnaissance platoon, worked with the Free French, practice patrolling, all these things that's so necessary for a battalion to do. I remember my first day in combat. We felt very safe in a tank. But during this first day, after I seen the first tank hit by 88 and burn, we began to get scared. But even though we were awful scared, it didn't seem to be much of a handicap of doing our job, which was to destroy the enemy. And we did a fairly good job that first day. My name's John Winter. I was a tank platoon sergeant, 10th Armored Division during World War II. After fighting for about three weeks around Metz, we moved north to the vicinity of the town of Theonville to participate in the 3rd Army Offensive designed to capture Metz. The plan of 20th Corps, to which the 10th Armored was assigned, had two phases. To destroy the enemy in Metz, and to catch him as he tried to pull out of Metz. The mission of the 10th was to make a deep penetration into the enemy's lines. Once it had crashed through the German defense, the left column, Combat Command B, was to advance east and seize a bridgehead over the Tsar River near Mertzig. The right column, Combat Command A, was to take the division objective, including Busanville, which was the center of arterial highway and railroad traffic running northeast of Metz. The enemy blocked the way and fought savagely. the Tigers clawed their way through the German defense. By the time the division had completed its first major offensive mission, it had taken 64 towns, repulsed 11 counterattacks, captured 2,000 prisoners, and destroyed great quantities of materiel but the price was high. On December 7th, 
Hitler approved the final draft of Operation Christ Rose, now renamed Watch on the Rhine. Hitler's plan of attack was to break through on the Ardennes with three armies. The 6th Panzer Army, led by the butcher from Bavaria, Sepp Dietrich. The 5th Panzer Army, led by Baron Hasso von Monteufel. And the 7th Army, led by General Brandenburger. They would cross the Meuse River on the second day between Liège and Namur, bypass Brussels, and reach the great port of Antwerp on the seventh day. This operation, Hitler believed, would destroy more than 30 American and British divisions. He believed it would be the beginning of the end for the Allies. Within the next week, thousands upon thousands of troops and thousands upon thousands of tons of materiel were transported secretly from assembly areas to terminals just behind the front lines. On the eve of December 15th, one quarter of a million Germans stood poised on the line of departure, prepared to annihilate the enemy. a.m. the following morning. Flame erupted along an 85-mile front. Hitler's great drive to Antwerp had begun. <laughs> <laughs> 